snow is coming down. I've already shoveled off my steps, I think three times. Every time I shovel it off, I feel like there's two to three more inches accumulated. So um, this is what we got to deal with. All right, so this is kind of like a, uh, kind of an unprepared vlog. I put it out into the Instagram world that I was going to do a, or should I do a uh, vlog about surviving the winter in an off-grid tiny house, which is what I'm in. Want to apologize at the beginning of the video that my house is a mess because I've got a lot of things happening right now and I'll actually probably talk about that a little bit in this vlog, so. I also just realized the lights are off, although I have beautiful natural light coming in uh, because I have these north facing windows right here. It's middle of the day. It is almost one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it has been snowing since uh, I think like one, two in the morning, somewhere around there. Cause I think I fell asleep around, around that time and I, I saw flurries coming down. Maybe six or eight inches of snow right now. Um, we're probably gonna get right around 10 inches of snow by the end of all of this. My disaster of a house right now and how unorganized and, and messy I am right now. It's cleaning day, it's cleaning day. And it doesn't help when you have this, you know, beautiful creature that also loves, loves to tear, like tear things apart. Like like her, her Christmas stuffed animal that she got, yeah. Got that for Christmas, just ripped apart. So there's remnants of a stuffed beaver just all over <laughs> all over the tiny house. That's, that's awesome. Good job, Glaish. Love you for that. We got some football happening because I'm recording this on a Sunday. All right, let's get into the good stuff. Obviously, we have an overcast day today because it is snowing good out. It's This is not a blizzard. They just called it a winter storm. So there's a few things you have to deal with when it comes to the off-gridness of it all in a tiny house. So I have two massive rely on batteries they're 15 kilowatt each i have two of them so that's 30 kilowatt hours of battery 30,000 watt hours i'm running things like my refrigerator my heater my starlink internet which is probably one of the biggest draws my tv those are the things that are pretty much constantly running uh, a couple days ago i did laundry however i had sun that day so i was getting i was that was pretty much free power for laundry because at the time I did laundry, I was getting roughly 1100 watts of solar from my 3000 watt solar panel array that is up on my roof right now. Now, if you followed me for a little while, I had a tree that fell on my house because I cut it down incorrectly, actually smashed one of my panels. So we're actually down a panel, but because of the angle of the sun or the earth and how the sun is hitting the solar panels, we're getting not a lot of solar in the wintertime, especially up here in Maine. Obviously a day like today where there's just overcast, I have to use my generator uh, that has been obviously a lifesaver when it comes to wintertime off-gridness. Now, if I was at a property or I was at a village or even an RV park where I could plug into a 30 amp you know, receptacle, then that is grid power and I would be able to use solar as well as grid when I needed it. I have power right at my street, but I don't, I didn't bring the power up to the house. It's, this is, this is all off grid. Next thing you got to think about is water, water tanks. I have a hundred gallon freshwater tank that is inside. So it stays heated and it's not going to freeze. I have no gray tanks on the outside. The way that my drain works is it drains straight out. However, I dug a dry well and I use all biodegradable soaps and et cetera and so forth. And then I have no black water tank because I have a Laveo dry flush as my toilet. And then the other thing is heat. The heater that I have is Van Life Tech. I built my tiny house as more of like a boat, a yacht, or a van. I use a lot of DC power. So my refrigerator is run DC power, 12 volt. My heater is 12 volt. All of my lights are 12 volt. My air conditioner is a 48 volt because that I have 48 volt batteries and I, I got the option to have a 48 volt air conditioner. So my heater, we'll walk on over here and I'll, I'll turn the lights on for everybody. My heater is the Van Life Tech system right here. You can see that the floor is at 87 degrees. I have roughly 300 feet of PEX tubing in the floors, all right? And they zigzag back and forth and my floor is super warm right now. 
It's at 87 degrees. System has, has glycol in it, and that radiates the air, right? Like a radiator would do. It's a two-stage system. So the second stage of it is I have blow, I have a forced air right here. So I have a like a, a setup in here where when it needs when the forced air needs to come on, I think it's like a four degree separation. When the degree separation is right now it's at 68 degrees, but I actually have my heat set to 70. So when that drops to 66, my forced air will automatically come on, go back up to 70 degrees, and then it shuts itself off. I think I think I set it at a four degree. You can set it at a 10 degree separation. You can set it at a one degree separation, whatever you want to set it at. Obviously, you're going to burn more fuel if you have that, the second stage on. The floor stays warm, and then it warms everything up in the tiny house. So it warms like all of my cabinetry, it warms everything in my bench area over there. It just warms everything up. It warms my shower pan. What's also doubly amazing is all of my clothing is actually down in these two drawers or most of my clothing. I also have clothing over here as well in this cabinet. And so when I go to like put pants on after I get up out of bed, I'm putting on like really warm pants. In the winter time, it's just really nice. I put on shirts because I have shirts in one of those drawers. I put in a shirt, it's actually really toasty and warm. It feels like it just came out of the dryer. Going back to the Van Life Tech system, um, you can see it's 28 degrees outside. It gives me, normally there's little snowfall thingies right there. Um, and then I have heat to 70. So, you know, you can set that to whichever way you want. This, like I was saying, this runs off a of 12 volt power. However, it also is fueled by diesel. Diesel tank on the outside, and then I put an additive into the diesel tank, which you would do if you had like a diesel you know, car or van, you put an additive in because in the winter time, if it drops below a certain degree, like 25 degrees or 20 degrees, the diesel will start to gel and it's a little bit harder to go through the fuel lines. That's kind of how the off-grid house kind of operates itself. I need to make sure that A, I have enough food and water, obviously. I have plenty of down in my refrigerator. Uh, B, I have enough diesel to obviously last however many days I do. Full tilt which this is never running at full tilt, the, the van life tech system, but on full tilt, I'm told that it burns about a gallon of diesel per 24 hours. So per day, it's about a gallon of diesel. I have a 58 gallon tank on the exterior of the house. By the way, that's also my hot water system. It heats all of my, my hot water. So I could take a hot shower, I can wash dishes, I can, anything I need hot water for, I have that access to it. Now, down here, you might be able to see it. Again, my my bathroom right now is an absolute mess because I'm redoing a lot of stuff in here. I was not really happy with uh, how the bathroom has been operating. A different video for a different day. Uh, down here is uh, the, uh, the, the generator that I use. I just went out to Lowe's and bought a beautiful generator. Um, it is a dual fuel gas and propane. I don't use gas, I use strictly propane. Now people are gonna be like, dude, why don't you use a diesel one? Um, well, because I don't wanna use diesel pro, I'd rather just use a propane generator. It's just a, a lot easier for me. It's easy for me to get um, propane. I went out and bought three tanks. I can get them refilled at any time. Those are sitting outside right now. Why do I have the generator inside? Because I didn't want it to get covered with snow and I also didn't want the battery to die on it. So I brought it inside last night. Did I have to? No, I probably could have covered it. I probably should build like a little shed for my little generator because the generator sits in the back. I should probably build a roof over it. I just, I didn't, haven't done that yet. I should do that, but I haven't done it. I am going to take this little girl for uh, a W. She can do her business. Uh, it's gonna be a little tough in the snow, so probably not gonna bring you guys on that journey. Um, but I'll actually, you know, we'll bring her, we'll bring her on the journey. You guys can watch her run around. She loves the snow, so and then we'll go outside and we'll kind of talk a little bit about that.
this one's running around like crazy. Loves the snow, obviously. All right, so what I do here is uh, I hire, because I, I'm, I don't know if I'm lazy or what, but uh, I hire a guy, he's gonna come, <laughs> he's gonna come and plow the driveway later. Um, he's a local guy, found him through just talking to people in this town. I'm brush off the truck if I need to, but I'm not gonna go anywhere today because I got, I got food, water, everything I need. All right, I had to put Glacier inside because we'll walk over here. She's getting excited. You know, dogs do that in the snow. I haven't mounted my Starlink to where I want to put it. I have a pole that I'm going to put up in the back of the tiny house. So I'll have my Starlink literally attached to the tiny house. But my Starlink just sits here on the ground and she just bit the cable because she thought it was a stick. So I had to put her inside before she ripped the cable out and I don't have internet anymore. That would suck. We're gonna walk away from this here in a second, but I got, my generator is running, like I brought it outside. I shoveled off the platform, my short power. Pretty much what this acts as is uh, grid power. So if I had like, if I was at like a tiny house village, okay, and there was like, or an RV park, and you know, like there's a receptacle, you can just plug in a 30 amp plug. So this is technically my grid. These are actually my solar panels that are up on the roof. This is the replacement panel for the broken panel that's up there. Other things that you have to obviously want to try and get, especially with my steep driveway, I got bags of salt, you know, to get traction, uh, to melt any ice that I have that's possibly on my driveway. Um, and gear, really. Just gear is the biggest thing. If you want to have enough gear, uh, you want to have the proper gear. Okay, we're going to fast forward a few days now because it's necessary to kind of show everybody and explain to everybody what's going on. I'm sitting on my couch with my girl, obviously, and I got this warmest hat of all time. I don't necessarily need it for today, but it has been rather chilly the last few days since I last cut the video. Last night, I did in fact clear off the solar panels. Here's a little clip uh, when I was up on the ladder. I didn't want to film much of it because up on a slippery ladder between 12 and 14 feet in the air, it was a little little dicey. So I didn't want to whip out a camera or a phone and, and risk the fall. I just took that quick little video with my phone. Anyways, in the last couple days, you know, I, I was shoveling and clearing and, and just doing regular maintenance, but we actually got another winter storm warning. This one was going to be a little bit different. It's a different type of snow. That first storm was very fluffy and it was cold, so we got a different type of snow. The snow that we got last night, it came in, uh, it started around 6, 7 p.m., and it was in the low 30s, high 20s. And then it switched over to rain, so now all the snow outside right now is just very, very wet and very heavy. We got another six to eight inches, I believe. Um, a lot of it, I'm recording this right now at 11.30 a.m., so a lot of it has already not melted away, but it has melted away as well as uh, like the rain has actually helped it, you know, also go away. All right, so let's step outside. Glacier, you're gonna stay. No, 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 you're gonna stay. Uh, well, you can come. All right. All right, the reason I wanted to clear off the solar panels is because of that wet snow that's up on the roof right now. Again, it's heavy. I don't know how much weight my solar panels can handle and I didn't want to test them. I already have one broken one on that side. Um, and I didn't want to test the rigidity. Is that the right word? It's for the rest of the panels. Depending on what the weather is gonna happen over the next couple of days, I might go up there and do it again. What actually happened last night, which was, it didn't happen in the first storm, was my Starlink went out middle of the night. Um, so I got up, it has a built-in heater inside if anybody's familiar with Starlink. So it does melt any ice off, but for some reason it, it, I just had to go off and clean it off. And it was like pointed straight up. Once I like took it up out of the ground, because I, I just think maybe the snow was maybe too up close to the, the bottom of the dish. I don't know. So as soon as I lifted it off the ground and put it onto the top of the snow, it worked. Yesterday, I ran those same chores again. So I went and got more propane. I just topped off what I needed. It didn't even cost me, it was like 25 bucks. Because I topped off the three tanks that I have. I've only <laughs> used half a tank from from topping off from last night into today because I wanted to recharge them back. Now, the sun is shining and I would have gotten some nice solar, but it's all covered. 
I got more diesel fuel, which I didn't even need, but I thought that this storm was gonna be a lot heavier than it is. I am gonna be driving out of here today because I'm gonna hit the gym and run a, and just you know run some errands. I went to the grocery store and got food, and I, and I also got some more things of water. The reason I was actually prepping myself for a week is because of the type of storm that it was. So the other thing that I really like to do is I will check the weather patterns. I also knew that this was gonna be a heavy snow, and when it's heavy snow, what you sometimes will get are broken tree limbs. You'll get even fallen trees. You wanna see if it's gonna be high winds because that's another thing that can cause trees to fall over. When trees fall over, they will tend to hit power lines. And if power lines you know, get knocked down, there's a very good chance that roads could be closed. So what would happen if my road was closed on both ends and I couldn't leave, right? I couldn't go to the store. Now, in a perfect world, I would have snowmobiles. I would have some sort of means of transportation in snow. It, you know, if you are truly, truly way off grid, I would highly recommend getting something like that. I'm not that bad. I could actually, I could even walk if I needed to. It would be a couple mile hike, but it is what it is. I am fine where I'm at. I'm, I'm rural, but I'm not that rural. I'm not as crazy rural as some other people that are out there. I wanted to show, I wanted to show you how, how good of a job my plow guy did. Just look at this. You know, obviously, it's so easy for him to plow my 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 area technically you are not allowed to plow down into the street and across into somebody else's yard that's that's technically illegal so what he does is he just plows up i've got plenty of room for them to plow up to that right now it's beautiful it's like 40 degrees sun is partly cloudy whatever it's beautiful i mean i'm in look i'm in a hoodie it's freaking gorgeous i, I love like this kind of winter the winter, like when it, you know, you get a, a dumping of snow and then it's like beautiful the next day. So I'm gonna run the generator, I'm gonna charge the batteries up for today. I got a meeting at two o'clock. Just wanted to give you guys like a little update on like kind of what happens, you know, how to live off grid. So uh, it's actually a lot easier than what everybody makes it out to be. Very easy, as long as you prepare. All right guys, I'll see you guys next time. Later.